Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Desperado channel. This is a place where we focus on that most wonderful fusion of sci-fi and history, steampunk. At other times we go off into general sci-fi and fantasy, and still other times we talk about history. Today is one of the latter, and I am going to talk about the upcoming birthday on October 27th of the 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt, who served from 1901 to 1909. And uh, he was born in 1858, died in 1919. Didn't quite, you know, didn't make it much past 60, unfortunately, but he, if he were alive today, he'd be like 160-some. <laughs> he'd be 164, as a matter of fact. So, Theodore Roosevelt, I chose to talk about him because he's a favorite of mine. He was a colorful character who had strong connections to my birthplace of North Dakota. Now, we North Dakotans are used to coming from a small state in population-wise uh, without, any, without any actual presidents uh, hailing from there. And so, because Roosevelt lived in North Dakota for a while, we kind of like to count him as a native son. Theodore Roosevelt was born to a, a wealthy family and he was kind of sickly, he had asthma as a kid, but he chose not to spend his life in idleness and luxury and not to, you know, whine about his, his uh, sickness. He chose to live a vigorous life and uh, sought adventure and various business schemes and he was always busy and he, he did not let anything slow him down. Uh, his time in North Dakota was as a rancher in, in the North Dakota Badlands, which, which um, surround the Little Missouri River. Not to be confused with the South Dakota Badlands, those are totally different. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> he lived there from 1884 to 1887. And in commemoration of this, in, in 1947 and 48, two tracts of the Badlands were dedicated to be a national memorial park. These are named after him. And being it was the only national memorial park, uh, they renamed it, dropping the word memorial, in 1978. Because it was getting left off all the lists. And it's, and it's a great national park, just like, you know, just like all the others. There's a lot of uh, historical uh, interest there. You know, with uh, with Roosevelt, you can see his his um, cabin. What his Maltese Cross cabin has been moved uh, to the headquarters of the Southern Unit. He's also got uh, the Elkhorn Ranch site, which is in between the North and South in its own little separate area. Uh, that you can see. And, and by the way, I've never been to that one, that that part. It's a little bit remote, but it's nice that they preserved it. And so there's a lot of great wildlife you can see there. You can see the scenic Badlands, which are like kind of a, you know, almost a lunar looking landscape, a bit reminiscent of the Grand Canyon uh, in, in here in Arizona, and the great wildlife like the, the bison, otherwise known as buffalo, and the prairie dogs, which is a favorite of Mrs. Desperado, and bighorn sheep as well. And uh, so we've, I've been there many, many times, having grown up nearby. <clears throat> so back to Theodore Roosevelt. He traveled, uh, he traveled extensively, he hunted big game, and he advocated for conservation of nature. You know, modern people who don't understand the balance of nature, um, as exemplified in The Lion King, where they talk about the circle of life, they don't often realize that hunters are some of the most ardent uh, advocates for conservation. Because, basically, you know, if you want to hunt, you have to preserve habitat. And that's the biggest thing that uh, destroys animal species, is not hunting, not these days anyway, but destruction of habitat under the expanding population, you know, and uh, the use of land for other purposes. And so Roosevelt was a big, you know, advocate of national parks and preservation, that kind of thing. He also helped facilitate the Panama Canal, a project that America could never, never, never do this, these days. 
I mean, it was spectacular, one of the greatest engineering feats of the world's history. Now, China has been talking about putting in a, in a, in a second canal in Nicaragua, and I believe that China could do it, because they have the will. But unfortunately, we don't. And because that's the way America was in his day. America, America was a young country that had recovered from the Civil War. It had an optimistic view. It was becoming a world power. Everything looked optimistic and rosy. I mean, it wasn't perfect by any means, but things were getting better. You know, you know, women were achieving equality, and, and you know, blacks followed on later on, so so on and so forth. So I think the people who you know condemn the U.S. at, at his time are very very short-sighted. Another thing Roosevelt did, which is something very few modern presidential candidates have done, is he was in the military. And he volunteered, and he was in a regiment that called the Rough Riders, and which then they fought in the Spanish-American War, a very brief war, and uh, they and the battle for San Juan Hill in Cuba. And he also, so he didn't shirk, he didn't shirk, you know, military duty. He wrote over 40 books. And uh, the only one I've read so far is a, a collection of essays called The Strenuous Life, which was kind of interesting. Uh, so I'm definitely going to read more. Uh, some of these, I don't know if all of them are, but some of these are available at, for free as ebooks on Gutenberg.org, and which I always sing the praises of. As president, uh, Roosevelt was known as the trust buster. He didn't like monopolies of big business. And he and he tried to break them up, and it's something that we don't have nowadays. We, we just have increasing concentration, and the rich gets richer, and the poor gets poorer. We could really use a, that kind of a, of a president these days. As far as cultural legacy, he, he uh, is responsible for the name of the teddy bear. <laughs> There's a story going around that when he was hunting, his uh, guides had uh, chased a bear cub up a tree, and they said, okay, Okay, sir, go and shoot it. Well, he said, no, no, that's not sporting. That's a baby. I'm not going to shoot that. Let it go. And people were so uh, inspired to hear that that, uh, that an, uh, an enterprising toy maker invented this, this uh, toy bear, which they named after him. And so <clears throat> another cultural legacy of Roosevelt was the term Alice Blue which was named after his daughter. His daughter, Alice Roosevelt, says, see, Roosevelt was like, at that time, was the youngest president who had ever served. Uh, and he was, he so he had a young, a pretty daughter that was popular in Washington social cir circles. And she, her favorite color was this light blue. And so that became named after her. And in fact, there was even a song that was popular at the time called Alice Blue Gown. Now, his, he had kind of a quick rise through politics. He served as governor of New York and later became vice president under William McKinley. Uh, the assassination of McKinley in 1901 thrust him into, pre into the presidency. And he ran again after his that term was, was uh, over and he, and he won. And then later he stepped down for his protege, William Howard Taft. And, and seeing from the sidelines, Taft's performance in office, he became, he became convinced that Taft wasn't doing a good job. So in 1912, he ran against Taft. Now, he wasn't able to get the Republican uh, nomination, but so he pro founded his own party called the Progressive Party. And uh, unfortunately, this split the vote. It's interesting that the Bull Moose Party, as it was often called, because the uh, Bull Moose was the, was the uh, signifier was the symbol of the Progressive Party that his party got more votes than uh, one of the two major parties which is like the only time this has ever happened because he beat out Taft and he got far more electoral votes than Taft. Taft like only won two states. Unfortunately it caused the Democrat Woodrow Wilson to win and uh, I may talk about Woodrow Wilson sometime. I, my ad attitude toward Wilson is nowhere near as favorable as Teddy. Wilson was a well-meaning meddler who got us into the Great War, uh, got the United States into the Great War, otherwise called World War I, which 
led to some horrific, horrific consequences as time went by. So I can't say I have any love for the late Woodrow Wilson. Uh, so anyway, it's interesting. It's interesting consider, to consider the progressive plat platform. So understand that Roosevelt uh, started out as a Republican, and he was by today's standards he'd be considered an extreme right winger. But look at the platform they had: campaign finance reform, uh, which. I think the recent times have shown how necessary this is with all the, all the dark money flooding in and, and uh, controlling our elections. And uh, also, you know, also reduced tariffs, women's suffrage, uh, a social security system, and an eight-hour workday. And so it's, it's kind of ironic that these uh, whiny social justice types condemn him for his association with colonialism while not while not actually crediting him at all for spearheading these policies which some well m most of them later later became law and unfortunately the campaign financing went away <laughs> that the finance restrictions went away but you know it wasn't Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt's fault as far as the colonial colonialism goes it I think refers mainly to the Spanish-American War, and also the fact that the U.S. Uh, fought a brief war in the Philippines after the Spanish-American War. Uh, a lot of Americans don't even know about that. And the idea was that the Filipinos wanted independence, just like we had given Cuba, but the U.S. said, no, no, you're not ready. And so there was this brief war, and, and there were some, you know, there were some atrocities involved, as there are any war. But uh, nobody's perfect. I mean, you've got to say that the, the war wasn't as one-sided as a lot of people would believe. In fact, there were issues, you know, there was an Islamic insurgency at the time, which could have ended up, you know, taking over the Catholic majority of the Philippines. Uh, there was, uh, the Germans were trying to acquire more colonies and they could have easily ended up taking over the Philippines and they would have been definitely more heavy-handed than the Americans and the Americans also uh, liberated the Philippines from Japan after Japan had conquered it in, during World War II so so you know the Philippines if you speak to Filipinos I think they have kind of a love-hate relationship with us uh, at least that's my impression and so uh, Roosevelt is also an anomaly in that he's uh, one of the one president that has never had his likeness on a coin or a bill. If you don't count the presidential coins, which you know they basically all got put on, and uh, it's at the same time he got his face carved in Mount Rushmore in South Dakota because even though the three other presidents are in on tons of have been on tons of money and are the more popular three, Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln. And I recall, I recall hearing this in Medora, because they used to have an annual summer musical, and one of the uh, MCs to quote this every time, he, and I don't remember who said it, and I can't find it on the, uh, uh, in the internet, so if somebody knows it, please let me know. He's, uh, he said somebody was quoted as saying that as far, as far as America, or the Union, uh, Washington founded it, Jefferson organized it, or reorganized it, not sure which. Uh, Lincoln preserved it, and Teddy Roosevelt revitalized it. So that's, that's an interesting view. It's a perceptive one. Now, of course, being a white male Gentile, Teddy Roosevelt's legacy is under fire in today's politically correct climate, to the point that these activists, who the same kind of people who take tear down the... Uh, uh, statues of great men like Robert E. Lee, who despite fighting for the losing cause, was an honorable man. Uh, they, the same people had his statue, his equestrian statue, taken out of the New York History, uh, Natural History Museum. And uh, North Dakota was all too glad to take it, uh, to put it in the uh, upcoming Teddy Roosevelt Presidential Museum in Medora. <laughs> with a the small town where near where Roosevelt lived. 
Roosevelt is also a character in the long-delayed sequel to my steampunk novel Fidelia's Automata. And uh, in this alternate history, Mc McKinley was, was, did not die from the assassination attempt, and, attempt, and uh, Roosevelt became stayed as vice president, and he went to the Philippines to try and sort out the war there. And originally, I had him, you know, I had portrayed him as a bit of a villain. But the more I learned about the man, uh, because of his support for that war, but the more I learned about the man, I, he was a complex character, and I don't see, think he deserved that treatment at all. So, I mean, you know, I'm in the process, of, eventually I'll rewrite it, and, and I'll give a more nuanced view, because um, I think that, I think that, uh, like Andrew Jackson, uh, Roosevelt was a good man who made some mistakes and did a few bad things. And though it may not help my, help my case to say this, there's some interesting parallels between uh, Teddy Roosevelt and Donald Trump. Both were born in, to, into wealth in New York City. Uh, both became businessmen who later got into politics. They had both successes and spectacular failures. <laughs> Both were Republicans who came into conflict with their own party. Both were teetotalers who uh, eschewed liquor because of having an alcoholic brother. <laughs> so it's interesting, and there's probably more parallels if I can find them. When all is said and done, I don't really care what the self-righteous progressives say about Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, he was a great American, an American hero like a lot of these that, are, that they're condemning. They're even condemning Lincoln, for God's sake. <laughs> You know, unless you count the possible exception of Jesus, uh, nobody's perfect. And you can't expect anybody to per be perfect, and even more unfairly, you can't judge people from history by the standards of today. Teddy Roosevelt, despite his flaws, is one of my heroes. So I'd like to say, happy birthday, Theodore Roosevelt. This has been my celebration of the 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt. Please let me know what you think on the comments below. Uh, for now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying, Adios amigos, from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Mm -hmm.